Welcome back to another episode of Mosaic Minds Podcast. We are actually on episode 22. It's crazy that we've been doing it that long. It's been since February now. We appreciate your support so much. The best way to support us or pay us a compliment is to give us a review on one of the audio streaming podcasts or just interact with us on our YouTube channel. Obviously, subscribe, you know, do the whole bell thing for notifications, all that good stuff. Today, we have former Colts tight end Ken Dilger. He currently is a mortgage originator for Bailey and Wood Financial, and he's also a sports anchor with Anthony Calhoun during the Colts season. We're going to talk football, finance, and banana bread. And of course, all of his contact information and how you can find him will be in the description on YouTube and in the show notes for the podcast. Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. First off, welcome to Mosaic Minds Podcast. We appreciate you being patient with us tonight and uh, kind of going through the paces there and getting everything set up. So uh, tell us a little bit about life in general right now. What's going on in your life? Uh, what part of the city do you live in? All that good stuff. Yeah, I came back to uh, Indianapolis, or actually Carmel, Indiana, back in uh, 2005 when I retired from Tampa Bay and just been living here ever since. Uh, I'm in the business world. I'm in the mortgage lending. Been there for 16 years and uh, I got two kids. Uh, my daughter is 24, working for Ernst & Young in downtown Indianapolis. My son, Zach, is 20. He's, he'll be actually 22 tomorrow and working here locally as well. And my wife, uh, I've been married for 28 years now, and she's uh, baking some stuff here locally for uh, banana bread and some cookies. So just been living life. Nice. Nice. Carmel's a great area. I love Carmel. And I, I always get a little yeah. free. I always get a little freaked out with the statues. I remember, I'll <laughs> never forget the first time I saw them when I was driving through, and I'm like, what? <laughs> What am I looking at? You know? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, downtown Carmel's got some, uh, some, I guess, statues of pedestrians just kind of walking down the street. And there's a cop yep. uh, statue that uh, kind of controls some traffic. So, yeah, Sitting, now we even a, have more roundabouts with a lot more statues around, though. So it's crazy. Those things get a bad name, though. I tell you, I, I like the roundabouts. <clears throat> I think they make life easy. <laughs> you know, like no stoplights. <laughs> They do move some traffic, but uh, if you have to go through four or five of them in a row, it can get kind of annoying. That's true. I think there's some military personnel down there, too. So, hey, I'm curious here. So you were locally to the Colts, and then I did a little bit of research. It looks like you played with the Bucks. Indianapolis is a great place and surrounding communities to raise a family. I'm curious, though. I I at least got to ask you, you know, Tampa's a pretty nice place, too. What made you kind of gravitate and, and move back to Indianapolis to make it happen? Yeah, we know when we went down to uh, Tampa, it was going to be a short-term stay just because our kids were uh, actually two and Zach was a newborn when we went down there. So um, I'm from southern Indiana down by uh, you know Jasper and Spencer County. And my wife's from Chicago, uh, Wheaton outside of Chicago. So we knew that uh, Indianapolis was going to be our home for the long term. And, uh, you know, Tampa was fun. It was a great time. I uh, had a lot of fun, met a lot of great people down there, but it just wasn't home for us. And we knew knew when we went down and we were going to come back same but different i live in the plainfield area and my in-laws are from danville illinois which is kind of my next topic there i was going to talk to you a little bit about the yeah. fighting illini but my family is from northern indiana so it's that hour and a half <clears> to two hours um kind of difference there so talk to me a little bit about uh, your experience there at, at uh being a fighting illini you know it was a great time uh you know i was a quarterback in high school wasn't highly recruited and just wanted to go play football in the Big Ten. And Illinois was the only school that gave me a, a football scholarship and kind of went there uh, almost as an unknown. Um, you know, I was a quarterback in high school and kind of made the transition to tight end early in my career because I saw some playing time open up uh, after I redshirted a year. So it was just a spot for me to go go somewhere and wanted to play football, and uh, it worked out pretty well for me. <clears throat> 
Absolutely. And, the, and as far as the destination of the Colts, you know, obviously you had a good experience. You were part of some great teams there on the turf and stuff. Uh, talk to me a little bit about um, maybe were, were you hoping to be in the Midwest? Were you open to whoever would uh, kind of draft you at the spot you were wanting to get? Maybe walk me through that process. Yeah, going through the draft process, you just never know who's going to come visit you and uh, what teams that you're going to go visit for a uh, in-house visit. So the Colts is one of those teams that uh, I spent a lot of time with at the Combine. You know, Tom Bata was their tight, tight ends coach back then. But, you know, I took visits to uh, – Oakland Raiders, uh, Seattle, uh, Washington, uh, I think Detroit, Chicago. So a lot of teams around the Midwest, but you know a lot of teams on both coasts as well. So I could have gone anywhere, and uh, luckily the Colts had the uh, second-round pick and used that on me, 48th overall, and it was fun to be home and play here for seven years. You, you played in the um, Jim Harbaugh days, right? Yeah, but I did. I, uh, I visited the camp there in Anderson several times, so we've – you wouldn't have known me, obviously, because I was a little guy. But at the end of the day, you know, that was uh, cool, you know, watching that camp and being part of that. Hey, I'm going to do something kind of unique for you here. Uh, we've got it here on the Internet, but we're going to play a game of over under real quick. And I think you'll <laughs> enjoy this. We're going to look back at your <clears throat> combine days. So I'm going to ask okay. you some random questions. So when I say over under, I'm going to give you a number and you just if you can guess it over under and we'll have a little fun with it. If you don't mind, I, I can tell you got a pretty sure. good sense of humor. So what do you think your hand span was? Uh, I'm going to go 10 inches over or under on that. What do, what do you feel uh, like? Over. Correct. Correct. 20-yard uh, shuttle, 4.24. 20-yard 20 shuttle, uh, under. Yep. Bang, bang. Uh, vertical jump, 33 inches. Over. Exactly. And last one here, I'm going to go with a broad jump, nine foot, two inches. Uh, under. Correct. And then I lied. I'm going to ask you one more. Bench press <laughs> over under 18 reps. Uh, under. 17. Bang, 100%. So you ace that. <laughs> is, is that kind of a, is that kind of a nice uh, reminiscing there? That's the only reason I did that, because as a basketball player, I never made it out of high school. You know, I tried to play college, but... More importantly, is that kind of neat to reminisce that? I mean, it sounds like you remembered them, remembered them like it was yesterday. Yeah, actually, I do. Um, yeah, you know, going to the combine was a great uh, great time for me, meeting a lot of coaches. You know, I had a great visit with uh, the Green Bay Packers and Coach Andy Reid in his uh, hotel room. He was probably a good 50 pounds lighter and just sat there for about an hour and talked football. And, um, you know, a lot of the players you kind of hang out with at your position. There was other linebackers out there, out there as well, so – and that was in Indianapolis, too. So it was a great time to go visit the city. It's changed a lot since 1995, but uh, still, it was, it was a great visit. What was it like to to meet and play with some of your with some of your heroes? I imagine that you had watched you know plenty of those guys on TV before you you went there. Yeah, um, you know, being in Champaign, uh, you get a lot of the Bears games, and uh, of course, Harbaugh, Harbaugh was there for a good while and had some good success and. You know, uh, you kind of watched the uh, the Pro Bowl the year before. Marshall Falk had a great year as a rookie. Uh, went to the Pro Bowl, had an exciting game too. So it was kind of neat to see those guys that you watch on TV. Then all of a sudden, the next year, you're standing right beside them in minicamp. I'm sure the fraternity is still strong too. You know, former teammates. Hey, let's go out to dinner. Let's go play golf. I mean, I'm 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 assuming you play. You know, you got. I, I believe that's what it says there on the shirt. But uh, the the camaraderie's <laughs> still there. I'm sure many years later, right? Yeah, it is. You know, we have a pretty good group of alumni here in Indianapolis. Uh, even guys who never played here um, have kind of somehow retired here, and they're part of our alumni group as well for the Players Association. We actually have our golf outing uh, on Thursday here locally. So uh, it's just a great time to be part of a group that, uh, you know, whether you played with them or not, that we all went through that same thing for a good number of years and all kind of battling that same um, the same issues after football, you know, getting back into society, working, uh, raising families, insurance-wise, uh, health-wise. You know, the NFL is getting a lot better as far as um, getting better, you know, heart scans and health scans and anything you really need to kind of keep your health up because, as we all know, football is a pretty rough sport, and a lot of times these uh, these veterans don't last very long when they retire. Absolutely. Um, walk me through this. So – 
I'm not ashamed to say this. I've been in the arena that you, you know, I watched you play several times, actually. And I'm just going to tell you, I was very high sometimes, right? It, meaning uh, section-wise, let's just say I was two, three rows from the top just because that's the money <laughs> that I could afford to get in, right? When I was sitting there in the arena, a lot of times when you guys would come out on the field, to me, I almost rewound, you know, a thousand years or so. And, and to me, it's like a Greek coliseum. It's like a coliseum where the animal, not the animals and the people. I'm not comparing that, but what I'm trying to what I'm trying to convey is, is what do you feel like when that kickoff's ready to happen? And let's just say you're playing in a division rival game. It's on, um, you know, Sunday at 4:30, so everybody's watching. Walk us through that because I've never got to experience that. I've always wanted to on a on a large stage, but never got to. So can you <clears> walk <throat> me through what maybe you were feeling? Yeah, I mean, it was outstanding. The uh, the RCA dome. A lot of those Sundays was rocking. We had a good year in 1995, uh, and some of those games were sold out, and some of those games were loud as as uh, you can think of it. But uh, you know, even when Peyton got in there, uh, the dome just got better and better. It was a hard place to play, and some of those playoff games in uh, 1999 and 2000 were were pretty fun to be around. So uh, now that they got uh, Lucas, it's not as loud as uh, it once was. You know, you have so many great memories of the RCA dome and. Uh, you hear fans later on down the line, down the road, that have said, hey, I was at that game. You we were cheering for you. It was so loud. I couldn't even hear myself think. But, you know, coming out of uh, the locker room to the, the fans, the arena, uh, you know, some of those fourth quarter drives was, was almost deafening um, for our defense and uh, the opponent's offense. So it was a fun place to play and uh, so many great memories. Now, you're in, you're in real estate now, right? Yeah, I'm in mortgages. Mortgages, okay. So how how does uh how does your experience in the NFL kind of help and translate into the business world? Um, there's a lot of uh, positives that you can take over. You know, being a, a self starter, you know, it's all about sales. Uh, you don't have a, a salary to fall back on; it's all commission. So uh, the better you are at going out and getting stuff and being due diligence as far as making sales calls, you know, the more money you're going to make. But you know, um. Being in being in the business world outside the NFL, you know you're not protected. You know once you're in the NFL, you're protected almost 24 seven around the clock during the season. Um, and in the in the real world, it's it's all on you. You gotta you know protect yourself because there's a lot of uh, um, I guess bad people out there trying to take what you got, and you hear it all the time about cybersecurity and uh, protection and all that good stuff. So it's just it's a different world nowadays than what we had back in 1995 and and being in the NFL. So are you a uh, mortgage loan originator? If, if I read that right yeah, or am I, I wrong? Am. There? Okay. Yep. So let me ask you this. If you deal with, let's say 10 clients, is, is it, it's kind of a, not, maybe an odd question, but like do most of those people realize, I guess, who you are, what you did, or some people kind of oblivious to that factor? How does, how does that mix look in the business world for you? <laughs> it kind of depends on the age of the uh, client. A lot of my older uh, clients, you know, know who I was, you know, 20 years ago playing for the Colts. And you know, a lot of these young kids, they have no clue who I was. And either the realtor tells them or maybe their parents were, were fans of mine. So they kind of find out uh, third hand. But, uh, you know, me being in the professional league for 10 years and winning the Super Bowl down in Tampa, sometimes doesn't really does not have an effect on uh, who I do business with or how I even Absolutely. get a deal. So it's you would think that, hey, I've got uh, all this experience on the NFL and being a professional athlete, but sometimes it doesn't even help. Right on, right on. I did uh, equity seconds during the equity boom back late 90s, early 2000s out in San Diego. Yeah. It was it was insane out there. You know, one month uh, appraisal would go up X and then uh, people would bring in an actual walkthrough appraiser to actually give them the real value as opposed to the on paper, or the computer or the comps, you know, <laughs> Hey, my home's 300 square feet bigger and we got a pool. It's got to be worth more than my next door neighbor, you know, type right. stuff. But, uh, we were, we were out there in the Scripps ranch area. So Raleigh fingers lived out there, you know, Ladanian okay. Tomlinson had a house a mile or two away. So I was just the guy that was the, the personal banker trying to get them uh, equity accounts. And, and that was a boom. So that was interesting. Very interesting. So, um, I, I see you stay in shape. I'm paying you a compliment there. Uh, what sports do you play maybe away from football right now? Um, I really don't play a whole lot except golf. Um, I try to get, uh, you know, once, once, maybe twice a week in right now. And uh, the good thing is my body is still good enough where I can carry my bag uh, most of the time. And we've got a good group. Uh, I've been a member at Cricket Stick for 
gosh, 21 years now. So wow. uh, try to stay nice. active as I can and try to play as much golf as I can. But sometimes the body kind of gives out. But uh, that's really the only thing I can really do right now is, is golf. How did you get into that industry? Did you just kind of fall into it, or did you? Um, are you? Is that was that your background? Is that your degree it had something to do with something to do with that, or how, how did you get into that? Um, I was a marketing major at the University of Illinois, and uh, when I retired in two thousand five, moved my family back here. Uh, I had a probably about a two year run where I didn't really do much, and at some point uh, you got to get off the couch and and be productive, and you know you can't play golf year round here in Indianapolis. So I was kind of <laughs> looking for something to do and. Uh, I had a buddy that was in the field and wanted me to help him out a little bit, and this kind of grew from there. Hey, I'm going to throw you a networking nugget, man. Uh, networking can come <laughs> at the least least expected times. Oh, of course. So, so being a former athlete, I might surprise you a little bit here. I'm going to tell you that the best networking you can do sport-wise is pickleball. Have you ever played <laughs> it before? I have not, but I know it's very popular. A lot of my friends play it, and uh, you know, a lot of those indoor courts are going up all around Carmel now, so... It's it's getting very popular. I know you don't know me from Adam, and you were very humbled to you know be on our show and everything. But if you ever have an interest, I'm a certified instructor. I'd love to show you how to play, kind of tinker around a little bit. You'd be shocked. We've actually <laughs> ran tournaments before where we've had kind of a real estate bracket, if you will, just because oh, really? those people, the stockbrokers, the real estate people, I you know I know two or three people in your industry just through that sport. So I don't want to overdo it with that sport, but at the same time, it's an open invitation. It's it's great to stay. It's a melting pot of former sports and athletes. Right. So that's that's kind of why. Yeah, I definitely. If I ever get into it, so. I'll give you a call. Yeah, it's it's fun. He took me and my he showed me and my boys how to play. So yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. It was almost like playing live action on a ping pong table. That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and you and all ages, you know, anywhere from kids right. to people in their in their seventies and eighties, right? Yeah, so one of the one of the best stories I've got at Crooked Stick for you is uh, before Daly was famous, as you well know, he played at Crooked Stick a lot. A buddy of mine that was a club pro went and got him, and um, I'll keep it concise, but basically ate you know the Neapolitan donuts, how they they have the frosted ones like the the white ones, the the brown oh, ones, yeah. and then the chocolate covered. Said he hit he hit about nine or ten of those donuts. Just smoked, didn't didn't stretch out at all, and went out and shot three or four under. I mean, just like everybody knows, this is 25, 30 years ago, but just a legendary oh, course. Funny. So talk to me a little bit about over the 21 years out there being a member. That's a pretty impressive run out there, and uh, tell me a little bit about that course. I've never had the privilege to play on it. Yeah, it's a fun course. It's one of Pete Dye's uh, gyms, one of his first courses uh, in the United States. He's had some great courses since then, and uh, right now, we're actually shut down for a redo that uh, has been needed for the last uh, 28 years. They're taking all of our greens down to the bottom and rebuild them all the way back up to the top and uh, expanding some of the greens to get more more pin placements. So that'll be ready next June. So it's going to be a kind of a bouncing around all of the Indianapolis Country Clubs and regular courses this year. But you know, it's a great group of guys. Um, you know, we got a lot of younger members that are kind of coming up, but you know the history with uh, John Daly starting out in 1991. You had some PGA, some senior events, uh, some the Solheim Cup back here uh, years ago for the women. So it's been um, a great course, a very publicized course with Pete Dye, uh, and we had had you know some uh, BMWs here that uh, I think uh, Roy won one and uh, Dustin Johnson won one. So and we had some great people come through here. It's been fun. Yeah, it's amazing to see the long drives and the stuff that those guys do. And my dad was a golf coach growing up, so I got lucky. I got to play up in uh, Wabash, Indiana at a Honeywell golf course, and they've had an Indian Open there, so nothing on the level of okay. crooked stick, but still a nice course if you ever get a chance. It's got a real nice nature-y kind of disappear off in the woods for four or five, six holes and come back out of it. It's kind of an interesting scenario there. So. What what do you do on the weekends? I mean, you know, you got football, you got family. If 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 you're not uh, watching the sporting event, maybe what are you doing away from sports? I do a lot of DIY projects. You know, I grew up on a farm, and uh, growing up on a farm, you have to kind of do all your stuff yourself because you're out in the country. And uh, my dad was kind of a, a jack of all trades, a mechanic, and he could build anything he wanted to. And so, for the last couple of years, with the mortgage business being slow, I've kind of redone my basement. Uh, redid my deck last year. Um, we had a big tree fall on it with a big windstorm, so I redid the deck and uh, you know redid some flooring in the uh, the main floor. And I just finished up a uh, a grill island on the uh, deck, and so it's just 
all these little projects at home and uh, try to watch golf on uh, the TV as much as I can. And my son Zach's 22, and he'll be uh, he likes to golf, so we go out whenever we can. So it's just I'm always around doing something. I'm optimistic about the mortgages because here's the way that I look at it is I think the property values have raised. I don't think we can debate, at least this is what I'm going to think, but interest rates are historically a little higher than normal. I think as those uh, interest rates more stabilize, I think the first time home buyer is going to be right back in that. So I think uh, I'm going to liken it to a snake that's maybe recoiling, to be honest with you. I think uh, (laughs) there's some momentum to be had, some contacts to be made. I think you're going to get new buyers. The low 20s going to hit the market. I can't tell you that I'm uh, educated in that, but I can't tell you that I'm not following it as well. <laughs> we've we've been blessed in the areas I was in. Uh, you'd appreciate this. A farmer sold some property for about $100,000 an acre, and they put up a bunch of houses that are more expensive than mine. So common sense would say I can't afford a high-end home. And uh, that kind of swung to where now we're closer to that high-end home just because the house is right outside of our you know, subdivision kind of rose in property. So that was nice. So, yeah, you know, I think the biggest issue we have is a lack of inventory and that kind of is holding on to it just because a lot of people have two two and 3% interest rates. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of those guys don't want to sell now and go up to a 7% interest rate. But the good thing is they have a ton of equity in their home. So once interest rates come down just a little bit, I think those homes that uh, that first time home buyer should be getting into will sell. And those guys, you know, with the, let's say the 250000 to $300,000 house will move up a little bit and buy that next home. I think this has been an interesting conversation so far for us because to me, it's not all about the sports life. I mean, honestly, that was a big part of your life, but I think it's just as interesting just to have an open conversation and kind of, hey, where are you now? What are you doing? Talk to us a little bit about maybe the business there. Um, are you still actively doing the bread business there with the wife? Yeah, uh, my wife's been baking about for about, uh, ba- about eight years now, and uh, she's got a banana bread product and cookie product. She sells at Joe's Butcher Shop in downtown Carmel. Nice. And she sells uh, out of um, Goose the Market, 25th in Delaware. So uh, probably Mondays and Thursdays, I deliver to Joe's uh, Butcher Shop in downtown Carmel. Then probably Wednesday afternoons, I deliver for her at uh, Goose the Market. So I help out as much as I can. You know, she's s- super busy sometimes during the week, and you know, her busy season is kind of that November through January 1st, the holiday season when uh, people want to get packages. Uh, you know, Anthony Calhoun is a big fan of our banana bread. Nice. And uh, every Christmas I send stuff out to Jim Nance. Uh, last year was Mike Tirico. Uh, Tony Dundee's a big fan. Um, Tony Romo got some bread last year. Dan Orlovsky. Nice. So it's been all across the country. Have you guys thought about opening up a, a bakery? We're not quite there yet because that's almost like a full time job, and my <laughs> wife doesn't want to spend that much time and effort, you know, baking. I think you know if you open up a full time shop, you know, you've got to get a staff. Um, you know, we've had other <clears throat> other locations want to uh, sell our bread, but right now it's just her, and uh, she bakes out of a commercial kitchen here locally, and uh, that's about all we can handle for right now. I think I got you two new customers. My brother in law <laughs> works at the Carmel <laughs> Library, and my sister is administration at Carmel High School. So I think I've got you two, two new customers, <laughs> two referrals. How's that sound? So that's, that's good Perfect. stuff. Did you I'll start out as along. A, was it a hobby? Is she, has she always just been, been good at baking or? She's always been a fan of baking. You know, when she was, you know, growing up at home, she uh, baked cakes and stuff like that. And she always baked this banana bread and kind of gave it out for, you know, holiday gifts. And, and then some of her friends said, you need to start selling this. And she kind of looked into it and, uh, one of her friends kind of created the logo uh, that she puts on the banana bread now and on her uh, Facebook page. And then another person helped her form the LLC. And it's just kind of taken off from there that uh, you got this mini loaf of bread, probably like a two and a half by five and a half loaf of bread with cinnamon sugar on top. But when it's warm, it's so delicious that a lot of people eat it all in one setting. It sounds it amazing. Really it, yeah. it doesn't really make it home <laughs> once they buy it. So it's been just, fun. Just, um, so I don't forget to ask later what's the uh, what's the name of it so that we can make sure we put it on there. It's the uh, Heidi Ho Baked Goods. Okay. Hey, so earlier you mentioned you grew up on a farm there in Illinois. I I grew up on five five acres and we had farm animals, but I never try to tell people that we farmed if that makes sense. But talk to me a little bit about your experience, maybe growing up, where you grew up specifically, and maybe what what your acreage or farm or or whatever the I guess the growing up happened on 
Yeah, I actually grew up in uh, southern Indiana down by uh, Santa Claus, a little town called Mariah Hill, kind of stuck in Spencer County on the northern side of uh, Spencer County, right just south of Highway 64. Uh, you know, it's a small town. It's probably 300 people now. And uh, I said my dad grew up there. He was one of 11 kids, grew up on a farm, and he kind of followed in those footsteps. And he was a full-time mechanic. That was his main job. He still had a love of farming. So we had probably about uh, 30 acres right there on the homestead that, uh, you know, we raised some cattle, had some pigs for a while. And uh, at the end, it was just all cattle. And, you know, I, my main job in the summertime was putting up hay bales for, for us and all the farmers around. Uh, back then, they used these small hay bales. And uh, that was my main job, making $5 an hour all summer long in the hot, on the hot heat. So, uh, yeah. but, you know, I grew up hunting and fishing like every country boy did. And it was a great time. I had two older brothers that shared that same love of, of, of uh, hunting and fishing. So we were always doing something uh, out in the farm. Yeah, I lived in a similar area until I was about eight, about eight, I think, is when we moved to Greenwood. But I lived down in a, no one's ever heard of it, but a little town called Boonville. Have you ever heard of Boonville? Yeah, I know where Boonville is. Do you? Yeah. So that's, in my family, that's that's where they're still at. My cousins and my, my grandma and everybody's down there. But yeah. Call, we, always, we always had to be a basketball section on Boonville. Yep. Yeah. My college roommate was from Boonville. We'll talk about that really? off camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Evans, <laughs> Evans was the name. Oh uh, yeah, Ken. I don't know if you realize this, but I got a fishing lure company, so I'm 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 <laughs> nice. always fishing. I travel about fifteen thousand miles across the country. I've got oh, wow. five. My dad always makes fun of me because he's like, "Son, why why do you have a thick wallet?" And I always say, "Dad, it's not the cash; it's the fishing licenses." I got five <laughs> five different states worth of licenses in my in my wallet right now. So, um, what up? upcoming activities do you have maybe over the next three to six months any anything maybe for the business on the mortgage side or just in personal um you know there's always golf outings that uh bailey and wood sponsors i know we got some coming up here at the end of july end of june and some, some sometime in july but uh you know i focus on you know once the cold season starts i do the wish tv pregame show with anthony calhoun i've been doing that for 16 years now uh it's been a great time for me to kind of you know go out there and still follow the colts uh, we go live every Sunday from 11 to 12 on Wish TV, and uh, Anthony Calhoun does a great job of you know promoting this and uh, interviewing all the players in their pregame and postgame. So it's been a great time for me to kind of see the media side of what uh, sports media is all about here locally, and I still keep follow the team, and uh, you know people still recognize me. So it's all it's all in good time. Yeah, that their uh, their company's grown a lot. Actually, I went to I graduated with Mike um, from Whiteland. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I still like we're <laughs> so we're we're be friends on Facebook, and I'll see him post stuff about you know his pictures of his kids in the business. And oh, all that yeah. Stuff. But it's grown a lot really quickly. It seems like over the years, it has. I think Mike's up to twenty uh, some branches, all the way from Fort Wayne, all the way down to uh, Seymour and Columbus. Yeah, it's awesome, Ken. What's been a blessing to me is is I took broadcasting in school at Vincennes. I know Nick's heard this story about twenty five years ago, but what's cool to us is is like you know I've met Mark Monteith. We've met the uh, marketing people with the uh, Indianapolis Indians. Hey, random question here, and I'm not asking you per se, but um, have you ever been to the old timers outing that they have once a year downtown over by uh, University of Indianapolis, over by the Tennis Dome, by chance? I have not. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not associating that because we're similar <laughs> age. I want to I be careful here. He, he still lifts. He looks like he could rough me up, but. Um, point I'm going to make is is Bob Costas is the uh, the the guest. Uh, next year, Dan Issel was this year, and that's a phenomenal event. If you ever get a chance, go there because it's just so many sports-minded people all together, and it's just uh, people that you know would all be in one place, and it's kind of a, a a deal where you can rent your own table or get your own table, and you're kind of there with oh, wow. other sports-minded people. So it's uh, highly recommended. I'll give you more information off record on it, but it's just uh, kind of nice to see. So um, I'm going to wrap you up here with um, what do you feel like if I want to get in contact with you, maybe on the mortgage side, uh, the social media side, or just uh, interact or with even, you in general? even the bread. <laughs> we yeah, there, you about that. there you go. <laughs> Where do we find you? I'm going to allow you to kind of plug a, uh, a company or two or a link or two there. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can find me at Ken Dilger. Uh, Instagram, I've got a Ken Dilger uh, page, and I've got a Ken Dilger Home Loans page on Instagram as well as Facebook. So I'm all over social media. Uh, Bailey and Wood post a lot of stuff on our behalf. So I'm always out there. I have a personal website called Ken Dilger Home Loans for all of the uh, applications that come in through the portal. And so people can find me all over the place. 
I, I think you shared uh, true humility with us, man. It's uh, I, I love the city. Uh, we just had a guest yeah. on a, a social media influencer yesterday, and uh, it's just great to see Indianapolis boom and prosper the way it is. And uh, to talk with a uh, with a guy that I've probably watched how many ever games you played in Indianapolis? Probably ninety nine percent of those I watched every snap of. So it's uh, <laughs> it's 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 great to get to talk to you. I think you were easy to talk to. Hopefully, you feel the same and. Uh, you know, it's just great to see you <clears throat> having that life after football and having success there and passion there. And uh, one last plug, man, if you ever want to hit up the courts, you know, I'd be more than happy to show you around <laughs> a little bit and uh, introduce you to some more folks. Um, I can't guarantee anything, but I will say I could get you in front of some people that you don't currently know, and that's that's never a bad thing either. Yeah, I appreciate it. I know pick ball is picking up, and uh, there's so many events out there to uh, network uh, your current business and, and what you want to do. So. Yeah, I'm always up for uh, networking. It's just you know trying to find the time and uh, the right spot to do it is always a plus. I'm gonna uh, throw you one last one here. What's one play in your mind that sticks out? Doesn't have to be a, maybe a success, maybe something you wish you would have changed. But what's one play that maybe sticks out, college or pros, for you uh, in the football, <laughs> and then and then we'll uh, we'll kick it off and, and oh god and go from uh, there. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. Uh, not getting in the end zone in the Super Bowl. Uh, when Brad Johnson threw me the ball, I got stuck on the uh, one-yard line. And every time I see John Gruden, he always uh, bashes me about that. And, you know, <laughs> I, I dropped a touchdown my freshman year at uh, University of Illinois versus uh, Missouri uh, at the end of the game. Uh, that was one. You know, not getting in the end zone versus Purdue my senior year when this little DB knocked my knees out. I think he got player of the game or maybe player of the week <laughs> uh, as a little DB. I kind of run into him every once in a while. We kind of laugh about it. So there's always a lot of plays. You know, I played, what, 10 years in the NFL and four years in college. So there's always plays out there that you wish you had back. And uh, a couple of those like that come to mind. It's great to reminisce, man. I tip my cap to you and wish you the best. Uh, the, you know, keep killing it in life in general. And it sounds like you got some stuff to keep you busy and we're we're super proud of you. It was, it was nice talking with you, and you have a good rest of your evening, okay? Hey, I appreciate having me on, guys. Yeah, thanks, Ken. All right, thanks All right, again. See you guys. Bye.